Keep watching me like that? It's my job to watch you, Mrs. Esplanchita. I'm paid to watch you. Like a guard in a museum. That couple. They're doing things in public my wife and I would do only in the bedroom. And even then, in the dark. Mr. Tiosco, this is South America. Closer. It's an outrage. Dr. Korn has told me that your condition is very delicate and that I should watch you all the time. Dorothea. I forgot my crumbs for the birds. Would you get me some crumbs? Mrs. S. Prancida. If I start dying, I will call you. And you can come and watch and report to Dr. Korn. Look there. There's some black boy sitting on my bench. Anyone can use the park. That's, that, the that's my bench. I always sit on that bench. Go chase them off. Go tell them to give me back my bench. Tell them they spend their time better looking for a job and some decent clothes. I have class in 15 minutes, Mr. Tiesco. You, you want to leave, huh? I, I do. Yes. Leave. Leave. Will I still get... Yes, I will pay you for the full hour if it'll only get you to leave. Five dollars an hour, you could be a more obliging companion. Look, Mr. Tiesco, you asked me to ah, work with ah, you... Ah, go! Get me some breadcrumbs and yourself a magazine. Don't exert yourself. I give a like it was no mercy, you know. The birds! My little pets! You were throwing food on the ground? I was feeding my little friends. Dirty and disgusting birds. Look at this. Look what they've done to my shoe. Do you always use your handkerchief for a shoe brush? Why not? Do you use your shoe brush for a handkerchief as well? Would it be your business if I did? It just seems odd. Less odd, perhaps, than throwing food on the ground for dirty birds to eat. You should get a telescope. Are you speaking to me? You have keen sight. Ask the rabbits, ask the deer. I could show you an elk shed the size of an automobile in my room. I could show you a tiger skin in my dressing room, but that hardly means I shot it. Pa. Pa. What does that mean? Pa. That is a word? It's a lovely day, isn't it? Inferno City. <laughs> a scholarly work, I presume. It's very difficult to get good books in Spanish here. No, in Spanish? I'm Chilean. So am I. From Santiago. Indeed. Countrymen shouldn't fight. I propose a peace. I accept it, Senora. You should go to the Rivoli bookstore. I get all my books there. My favorite writers are the poets. Campo Amor, Zorilla, Neruda. Neruda, communist. He was a fine poet. He was a fair poet and a lousy communist. Thank God Chile has some good generals to, to take care of her. They put an end to Allende and his foolishness. A fascist. I should have known when you attacked my face. And who else but a communist would throw food on the ground for dirty and degenerate animals?
You said uh, you lived in Santiago? For a while. So did I. Jo just outside the city, actually. I used to go into town quite often to visit. Perhaps you remember her. Laura Llorente. Laura Llorente? The governor's daughter? Yes. Uh, uh, she was uh, my neighbor. What? They used to call her the Silver Maiden. Indeed they did. Skin like a lily, jet black hair, black eyes like ebony. A bit headstrong perhaps, a bit stubborn like a mule sometimes. Maybe she was merely firm in her opinions. Ha. You visited her? Yes. No, that is my cousin, Gonzalo Tiesco. He fell in love with Laura. She broke his heart. That's not the truth. It was he. Senora? I, I mean, um, that is... Uh, their affair was the talk of the city. That was not the version I heard. Signor Tiesco turned away from her love. Well, I... That is my cousin. Yes, this cousin of yours. He was a brave man. He was a courageous lover. He was a prince among men. <laughs> her parents thought he was a scoundrel and a good for nothing. That is a grave insult, Signor. I mean, that is an insult to the memory of my cousin. My cousin fought a duel over his Laura with a suitor, with pistols. And my cousin, he killed this other man and he had to flee to Brazil. He wrote Laura many letters, some in verse. It was a year before a letter arrived. By that time, everyone in Santiago knew Signor Tiesco had moved into a Rio apartment with a dancer. She was a ballerina. He was acting as her patron. She was from the Follies, and he was acting like a fool. Later, she took all his money and ran away with a younger man. You seem to know this story quite well. I heard it from someone. And I suppose you also heard that Laura ran off with some Spaniard. He was very charming. He was far below her. He used olive oil in his hair. Do you know if they, they are still married? He went back to Spain, fighting the civil war. He was shot by the fascists. I'm sorry. She must have taken it badly. She survived. She was determined. And of course, you know how stubborn, like a mule, she was. Yes. This, my cousin told me she was very stubborn, he said, and also very beautiful. Do you know if, if she ever remarried? No. Neither did my cousin. He, he moved away to escape the memories. It's hard, isn't it? Here are you and I, complete strangers, discussing your cousin and my neighbor, talking as freely as old friends. <laughs> After our initial disagreement. Disagreement? <laughs> you attack my birds. Perhaps I was a bit unreasonable. Perhaps. Will you be coming to the park again tomorrow morning? Well, I'm a very busy man. Uh, I have many friends. But if it's another lovely day and I can be sure of such pleasant company. Laura must have found it easy to love your cousin if he was as charming as you. He was more charming. Sides up. I'm an irritable old man. I find it hard to think of you as an old man. Thank you. 
Senor. Will I see you tomorrow? Because it is another lovely day. I shall bring the breadcrumbs. I shall bring a copy of Neruda's poem. That, that would be a charming gift. Until tomorrow, Senor. We looked at each other in the same way then. Gonzalo Tiesco. But I can't remember where or when. The clothes you're wearing are the clothes you wore. The smile. And so